Hi, Mr Corsi here. So before we look at some spaceships, I want to look again at how we measure the speed of a spaceship. And speeds of spaceships are measured relative to what's called the speed of light. Now the fastest rate at which a signal can travel in the game of life is one square per generation. According to the rules of the game, cells in the grid can only influence their immediate eight neighbouring cells in the next generation. So this diagram shows us a theoretical signal travelling out from a source cell at the speed of light. And we use the letter C for this maximum speed. Now, it can be proved that no object in the game of life can travel at the speed of light through what's called a vacuum. That's just a sea of dead cells as shown in this diagram. However, that's not to say that a signal cannot travel that fast. However, to achieve that, there needs to be a structure in the cells to carry that signal. So here's an example. This is a zebra stripe pattern that's a still life. That means it remains the same as the generations pass by. And a signal or pattern is able to pass through this wire at the speed of light. So let's see an example of such a signal in action. And here's one that was discovered in the late 1990s. And you can see the signal moves at a speed of one square per generation through the wire. That's the speed of light. So let's now measure the speed of a glider by comparing it to the speed of light or a speed of light signal. Now here's the glider wandering off the screen. John Conway always in hindsight thought it should have been called an ant, not a glider. So when was this discovered? It was 1969 by Richard Guy, one of Conway's co-opted group at the University of Cambridge. And it's clear its direction of travel is diagonal. But what about its speed? Well, let's compare the glider's progress with that of a light speed signal. So at this stage, the glider's gone through four different phases and it's resumed its original shape four generations later. And it's travelled one square diagonally. Meanwhile, a speed of light signal has travelled four squares diagonally from its source. So the glider's travelling at a quarter of the speed of a light speed signal. The speed of a glider, we say, is C over four, one quarter of C. So let's watch a few more generations of its journey. After another four generations, it's back to its original shape, having travelled this time a total of two squares in eight generations. And a light speed signal has travelled eight squares in that time. Again, this illustrates the speed of a glider being C over four, one quarter the speed of light, which is denoted by C. Also note that every four generations, the glider repeats its sequence of different phases. We say the glider has period four. Chronological order, the next spaceship to be discovered was the lightweight spaceship. And it was discovered in 1970 by John Conway. And it's the smallest of a family of three with similar properties, all found in 1970. So let's watch it in action. As you can see, it travels in a different direction from the glider. It travels what's called orthogonally. And again, to determine its speed, we'll compare its progress with the speed of light signal. So let's watch what happens. So here, after four generations, it reappears in its starting phase, but moved orthogonally by two squares. And you'll notice in the same time, a speed of light signal has travelled four squares. And say that the speed of this lightweight spaceship is 2C over 4, which simplifies to C over 2. Now it has period 4, and 2C over 4 is often used to emphasise the two squares it travels during its four-generation period. 
Now before we move on to the next spaceship discovery, there's an area of life research called glider synthesis. And this involves discovering configurations of gliders which crash and form various life objects. Now here's a particularly beautiful three glider crash. And it was discovered by Dave Buckingham in the late 1990s. So this is a three glider synthesis of a lightweight spaceship. Quite a remarkable sequence. Now, in this chronology of discovery, I'm highlighting discoveries of new speeds or new directions in spaceships. So it was 19 years before a distinctly new spaceship was discovered. And it's no agreed name other than its catalogue type name. And I'll explain where this name came from shortly. So we've moved to 1989 and to a man called Dean Hickerson. He was a mathematician working at University of California, Davis. And he's one of the very few mathematicians, incidentally, it's 511 of them to be exact, who have an Erdish number of one. And here's the proof. This is one of the papers where he collaborated with Erdish. This one again is from 1989, and that's the same year that he discovered his new spaceship. And here's Hickerson's discovery. So let's set it going and watch its progress. Now, obviously its direction of travel is orthogonal. It's not so obvious what its speed is, though. So we'll do our usual comparison with a speed of light signal. So let's set that up. And we'll use the cell with the red dot as the reference point. And here it's returned to its starting phase after three generations. And you can see it's travelled one square to the right in an orthogonal direction. Meanwhile, the speed of light signal has travelled three squares in the same direction. So that gives us the speed of the spaceship as being one-third the speed of light, or c over 3. Now there's another remarkable fact about this spaceship. Let's first count the number of live cells in its starting phase. We'll call that phase 1. And you can see there's 25. Let's do the same for phase 2. Here's phase two, let's count them. Well, once again, 25. And let's finally check phase three. There's three different phases. Here's phase three, and we'll count these again. And you can maybe anticipate the result. Yet again, remarkably, 25 live cells. So at last we're in a position to understand this spaceship's peculiar looking name. And you'll see now that the 25 at the front refers to the 25 live cells. P3 refers to its period of three generations. Now H1V0 refers to how it moves during one of its periods. And that's horizontally one square, vertically no squares. And finally the dot one at the end just refers to this being the first spacecraft discovered with these particular properties. So the next spacecraft discovered with a new speed was again by Dean Hickerson. And the reason that he was discovering so many objects at this time, that's 1989, was that he'd cleverly created a search program on his Apple IIe computer that could detect repeating patterns, even if they were translated a few cells. So here's an excerpt from a 1992 article written by a life enthusiast, David Bell. And in it, he summarises the discoveries made in the previous few years with regard to spaceships and the game of life. And here he explains the search programme that Hickerson had created. And later in the same article, he goes on to describe the discovery 
Pai Hickerson of the first ever orthogonal C over 4 spaceship. And then he types out the pattern with dots and zeros. Remember, this was 1989. And here it is. Again, this spaceship has no common name, just its catalogue name, if you like. And you should now be able to interpret this catalogue name. That 119 at the front would indicate that the smallest number of live cells in any of its phases is 119. And the P4 would tell us it's got a period of four, and during that period it moves horizontally one square, vertically no squares. So we want to see this spaceship in action. Let's go from the print version to the live version. And let's repeat that in case you weren't paying attention. And let's now set it off. Now as you admire its progress, see if you can distinguish its four phases and the fact it has moved one square after it cycles through these four phases. You'll probably find it easier to do this if you focus on one particular part of the spaceship. So I think the progress of the spacecraft is even more impressive if we speed it up and zoom out a bit. So we'll just let it leave the screen and then let's do that. Now by zooming out we can't see the squares now but you can just see the tip of the spaceship in the middle of the left edge. So let's now launch it. So what a magnificent sight. So there you have it. The 119P4H1V0 in all its splendour, discovered in 1989 by Dean Hickerson, the first ever orthogonal spaceship to be found with a speed of C over 4. Now, before I sign out, I'd like to show you a glider synthesis for the 25-cell orthogonal spaceship that Hickerson discovered, the one we'd seen previously. So let's set that one off. Wow. So if you'd watch closely, there were more than gliders involved in that synthesis. Let's see it again. You'll see a lightweight spaceship arriving from the right, and another one just arrives the last minute at the left. So this synthesis, let's speed it up and we'll see it repeating itself. So let's call this a repeated synthesis of the spaceship. So how's this done? Where are these gliders coming from? I think we should step out just a wee bit and see if we can see more of the structures involved. Let's step out again. I still can't see where they're coming from, so one further step out. Now we begin to see some of the highly engineered structures that are producing these fleets of gliders as they move into the centre. And you see these spaceship going through a gate at the right that protects them from any further debris. So this is an actual gun that was constructed by someone who calls himself Entity Valkyrie and it was constructed in 2020. And it really shows you how far life engineering has got to nowadays. An extraordinary structure. Well, that's Mr. Corsi signing out and I hope you enjoyed the video.